All right, welcome to a bit of an experiment on my part. So before I forget, first and foremost, yes, this video is called Ben A's Mystery Tapes. And uh, admittedly, that's a slight misnomer because uh, I had a viewer who I'm going to refer to as Ben A, uh, admittedly last summer, so it's been a while now, uh, sent me a box of 16 VHS tapes and one reel-to-reel -reel audio tape. And I have been through two of the VHS tapes to date, but I will not be running those. These five are the ones I want to spotlight, as it were. So anyway, uh, when I say experiment, I mean that I'm going to structure this and record this as if it were a live stream, but it's going to be all pre-done because, again, I don't know what's on these tapes. So there's always the whole copyright issue, and I'm not accusing the sender of uh, sending me pornography, but uh, it has happened in the past in just lots of tapes that I've picked up. Actually, it happens on a fairly regular basis, and they are usually not marked. So yeah, just in the name of keeping things on the up and up, and so I can edit where necessary, I'm going to pre-record this instead of actually attempting a live stream. Having said that, yes, I am truly recording this like a live stream. This is actually my phone that's recording here, and I'm wearing my live stream lavalier mic. And I have everything hooked up to my laptop as if I were doing, say, Archive Land Public Domain Theater. So, with that in mind, uh, I've been through, in case I haven't mentioned it yet, two of the 16 videotapes. Now, here's one of them, and it's marked, and it is indeed an episode of ALF from 1988. That is correct, off of WROC in Rochester, New York, the NBC affiliate. Uh, or at the time, I, I don't know my Rochester stations at all. But uh, yeah, uh, nobody tell Nick Pruer about this. He might want this. Anyway... So that is correct, original airing of at least an episode of ALF with commercials. The end is slightly cut off, but uh, yeah. So that's a candidate for me to transfer and pull the commercials and post to Archive Annex. But uh, yeah, these are the five I want to cover. So the other tape that I've already looked at was also marked, and it was marked correctly. So I'm going to take it on faith that these two bottom ones are indeed correct. But these three just have numbers on them, and that's it. I don't know what's on them. They're not cataloged. Uh, some of these still have the record tabs in them. Some of them don't. And uh, I've given all the tapes a full fast-forward and rewind to make sure that they're not uh, at least really known sticky. They still could cause problems, but the odds are a lot lower if I can pass them. So anyway, uh, this is about as problematic as they got this Polaroid one, uh, both ends of uh, the tape, the leader on both ends, snapped on me, so I had to do a little surgery. But before we get to the tapes, let me give you, uh, for one, a lay of the land, which might be interesting because there's a lot of wires. So anyway, there is my laptop and my daily driver VHS deck. So not one of my good SVHS transfer decks. This is just strictly for screening. Uh, if you see the little metal thing in the shot, that's the Calabar, so I can have just something to cut to if need be. And I've got the Behringer mixer, partially for the audio tape and partially just to have potential stereo sound. Uh, one of the tapes seemed to be kind of in stereo of the two uh, videotapes that I looked at. But anyway, let me uh, go into earthquake mode here. I do indeed have the reel-to-reel -reel tape queued up. Now, I cannot zoom on this phone uh, with OBS Studio, the software that I'm using. So I will cut to uh, the color bars from the Calabar and uh, we'll take a, a quick listen to the tape. Again, I do not know what's on it. I don't know what speed it runs at. I know absolutely nothing. 
So with that in mind, I'll probably take my first cut here and uh, well, at the very least take a listen to that tape. I don't even know why I'm adjusting the camera. Okay, I should also note that I can cut in to talk if need be. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and hit play on the tape deck, and we will see what happens. In regard to that, uh, your critics have come out very strongly recently uh, in, in criticism of your environmental policies. Well, uh, it sounds like that might actually be from a four tracker if you were paying attention to the panning. Uh, that That's a little unusual. But I'll turn the volume back up. We have continued uh, uh, doing what we came here to do. Uh, clean air and clean water, and both are cleaner than they've been uh, for a long, long time. And unfortunately, I don't own a four-track open reel deck. And if I try and cancel one of the channels, it's not really going to make much of a difference. But, uh, oh well, yes, we know there's something there, but it seems to be somebody's uh, little experiment. Anything. And in talking about a subject that I thought would be of interest to them, I was delivering a talk that had been put down on paper uh, many days before Ms. Ferraro was a, uh, spoken of as a, as a well. nominee. Okay, so it seems to be somebody's kind of uh, left-wing, negative land-induced collage or something. That's interesting. Okay, well, I'll take another cut here, and we will start going through our mystery videotapes. And we are back. Okay, well... Let's uh, let's start with our two marked tapes. So uh, it looks like we have the last episode of Knots Landing, which I I saw something on another tape I'd been looking at, a beta tape lately, with something to that effect. I think that was from '93 or so. So I guess uh, yeah, we'll just start with that. And there's a, a bit of a disconnect between the boxes and the brands of the tape. So this is actually a JVC but in a supervision sleeve, some uh, presumably cheapy generic thing. All right, well, let us cut over to, I'll leave my mic on for a moment. Cut over to the VCR, and it is the VCR, just to prove it. All right, let's see what we got. And something off of NBC. So, yeah, moment of truth. Okay, that seems uh, accurate. So, uh, let's, uh, I'll take a break here. I'll take a cut here. We'll see if we got any commercials. Last weekend, it. sneak preview audiences cheered a great new American comedy. Critics call it I'll turn that down for a moment. Okay, we got ads. Oh yeah, Dave. I've seen that movie uh, in the thrift store bins a few times. Uh, yeah, so this would be about 93-ish. I'm gonna grab my iPad and see if I can't look up this show and see when it aired. See if I can't pin this one down. You got a business. Great. Super activated charcoal. Okay, let me turn the volume down there. Okay. I, uh, according to Wikipedia, so take this with a grain of salt, this aired on Wednesday, April 28th, 1993. So I had the year right. 
uh, that Knott's Landing connection, uh, completely serendipitous connection, seemed to work for me. So this might be one of the easy ones to pin down. We'll just go ahead and say for now, Wednesday, April 28th, 1993, off of WROC, HEC, excuse me, in Rochester, New York. To normal. But does this look normal? America close up tomorrow on NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Okay, I was noticing a cut at uh, the would be end of this movie. If I can get away with this with YouTube. Famous cul de sac. Yep. Really and, uh, oh, we just kicked up to LP mode up from EP. And some sort of behind-the-scenes thing for the last episode of Knott's Landing. Okay, cool. Thinking back to the, even the pilot. To yeah. meet me. Okay, uh, according to, again, Wikipedia, we are actually up to May 13th, 1993 now. So just a couple weeks later, let's see here, just over two weeks later. Have I ever mentioned that my VCR hates LP mode stuff? Anyway, uh, I actually have not seen any commercials yet, but I've also been just scanning. So I don't know if this was a, a commercial cutter thing or aired without ads because it was kind of a special deal. But I'm just kind of looking around I let you here. reach back from the... Now he's just crying because he hasn't figured out how to sell overpriced gold bars yet. Anyway, uh, I think I found a commercial cutter too. Show us. Yup, just like that. So yeah, there are ads, just not on this particular recording. Her manipulation. And I think we're coming to the end of this. Alas, no ads. Yep. That uh, might have been all she wrote for this tape. I'll just uh, hit fast forward. Very yet, I'll stop. I will hit fast forward and see if the counter starts rolling again. But I'm thinking that's all she wrote for this tape. Yep, I'm going to say that is all she wrote for this tape. The VCR is slowing down, signaling the end of the, the thing. Yep. There we go. Okay. Well, that's tape number one. So, uh, let me eject this. We will queue up tape number two next. Let me uh, kick, kick back over to the camera. Now, obviously, I cannot run back to the future. But uh, let's check this out for local news. <laughs> Sally, Jesse, Raphael, anyone? So, uh, yeah, let's get into tape number two. Okay, tape number two. Let's see what we get here. Yeah, the Universal logo, I'm gonna guess. Universal pay television, so maybe a cable airing of Back to the Future, a movie I've seen way, 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 way too many times in my life. Uh, it, hell, I'll just give one of my stupid little stories here. Once upon a time, McDonald's would sell uh, select VHS tapes for like $3.99 or $4.99 with the purchase of an extra value meal. And I got Wayne's World and Back to the Future that way when I was in grade school. And I watched both movies way too often. I haven't watched any of the Back to the Future movies in a very long time now, but I bet you I could damn near recite certainly the first one by heart. But anyway, let's find out if there's any ads or if this is more of a, an HBO sort of deal. Okay, over half an hour in and no commercials and no sign of any cuts. So I'm gonna guess this is an HBO-ism here. Okay, coming up on the end of the movie here. Let's see uh, if we got any uh, interstitials, anything of that uh, ilk going on here. Hopefully YouTube's okay with uh, Back to the Future in Fast Forward, at least. 
Inc. International, one of the largest and most powerful, which led to an unbelievable... Oh, uh, there was a chop there, and uh, a promo for the parent trap. Okay, so I'm going to guess Back to the Future was an HBO sort of deal. Uh, let's, let's just fast forward through this, just in case the D company has any heartburn with it. Okay, what have I got uh, here? Let's start with Mickey. Mickey, how do you uh -oh. feel? I'm going to guess this is the D channel. We'll come back after these messages. To kind of control the universe. Are, are what you're saying that you may have found a principle that well, ties those forces? Uh, I suppose I should stop it in case uh, Johnny Carson's estate comes down on me. But uh, it actually has a complete airing of The Parent Trap. I uh, didn't notice any edits or anything in there, which would make sense, I suppose. But uh, yeah, not listed on the tape, but indeed there. Couldn't tell you exactly when it's from. I would guess late 80s, early 90s, the recording that is. All right, so I'm going to cut back out for a bit here and pick back up when I have something else to report. Today we have a very special program. This is something that I feel is the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. And I don't mean that religiously at all. That isn't about religion. It's about faith. Oh, here's something I haven't seen in a while. Sally Jesse Raphael. I wonder what she's talking about. Individuals with us. Now, they're exceptional in two ways. They have extraordinary musical talent, and they are mentally retarded. We have learned about them because they have been on television. They've been written up in magazines. To start off, Gary Ahern on the keyboard is going to accompany Gloria Lenoff and Paul Kuhn. Paul, by the way, is also blind. Moon bells will be ringing. The jerk in me wants to laugh, but uh, yeah, I know that would be in truly bad taste. The tape's acting a little funny too. We got ads, and that one had a 1986 copyright date. I'm trying to adjust the tracking on this thing. Now, whether or not that's when this actually uh, aired is anyone's guess. 40 Lee adhesive tabs and 20 Lee press-on nails for a perfect fit. Lee press-on nails. It's amazing savings time at Photogenesis. Want the latest in photographic and video fun? Then you want Photogenesis. Amazing low prices plus great service. Photogenesis. I'd like to talk to you about Miracle Ear. Well, that puts us at 1987, according to that copy right there. And I don't think they re-ran these things, or if they did, not for any significant period of time. I want you to sit back and relax. Jimmy Dean. That's what I haven't seen in a while. Uh, okay, they were saying News Center 13 up next, and that is written on the tape. So uh, let's see if we can get some local news going here. You have got a Get more out of life at your YMCA. My own son. You must have been to Sterling for those wives. From ABC, this is... Well, that uh, makes the date a lot easier. Right, reporting from San Francisco. Good evening. Here it is Friday and the end of a week which has been crowded with nasty accusations between the United States and the Soviet Union. First the U.S. and then again today the Soviets have had a field day saying how nasty and underhanded the other has been about trying to discover the other's most important secrets. I'll just chime in briefly here. Uh, the local news got skipped over unfortunately i'd rather have seen that than the national stuff oh well all right a new set of wheels no not just the wheels the whole thing watch out for the charming hardy har har i guess i'm gonna have to keep that one in my back pocket for a bad sitcom episode the charmings never heard of it <laughs> Later tonight, learn why a group is protesting the circus and how state monies could be used to help preschoolers. Join us for all the news at 11. From WOKR Rochester. <laughs> now we get the local news. With Wanda Miller and meteorologist Kevin Williams. Fresher. 
now okay we got ads on this recording of the noon news presumably another day from uh, that uh, national one that was on a friday so this could be monday monday the 13th 1987 Better. Don't throw away your old chair. Trade it in now and save at least $120 on a new genuine Lazy Boy at all three Lazy Boy Showcase Shop locations in Greece, Henrietta, and Arundacoy. Mild is the word of the day today on this Wednesday, and uh, we're going to ask meteorologist Kevin Williams. Mild, soon to get moist, though, so enjoy the relatively pleasant while you Wednesday. So, assuming this is after the Sally Jesse recording, I would put this on... April 18th, if I'm doing my math right. High, that being 56. Records include 18 way back in 1904, 84 back in 18... Uh, Western New York, indeed. I can't count. I had my dates wrong. The ABC National News was Friday the 10th, so that would put this at Wednesday the 15th. Tax Day 1987. Back, I'll step out of the way as we peruse a... Hey, well, that seems to be uh, it for the news. We'll see if anything else happens here. I'll just give it a quick little boost. Okay. More ads. That's always good. Uh, this tape has been in EP mode throughout. It's a T120, so that's uh, six potential hours, like six hours and six minutes, or more like 610, actually, if you want to get technical with it, in EP mode. So uh, what comes on after the news? Donahue? Really? I want you to have a good time and... Yeah, I feel the same way about the guy. For this year is over. Yeah. What it used to be without all the agony. And maybe uh, what we're doing is... Okay, for the life of me, I have no idea what the hell Donahue was doing at spring break in Fort Lauderdale. Trying to look hip for the kids or something. Who knows? All right, uh, we got more ads. Okay, uh, I've been keeping the counter on screen on purpose through this. Once again, I cannot stress this enough. This is not intended to be a proper transfer. This is just to figure out what's on these tapes and figure out what I want to run through one of my better machines later on and do a proper transfer and post the good stuff. And this tape, I'm going to call it right now. This is a winner. Uh, the Sally Jesse uh, bit was enough to make it a winner just for uh, something that you would not put on a talk show today but uh yeah uh, we'll just cruise through the last uh, potential half hour or so of this tape i have no idea what comes on after donahue maybe a, a soap opera because if that was the new news that would have put donahue at 12 30. okay i, I noticed a cut in this ad i uh, got a little too trigger happy with the power uh, nozzle canister with 2.2 peak horsepower motor complete with attachments can tackle your way toughest of making it. okay there's really two main uh, is that the budget gourmet that looks familiar we're, we're pushing my knowledge of whatever little bits of things i saw on tv when i was little okay uh in the market we got a and show. we toss it with a mixture of a third of a cup of white vinegar same oh it's so good Still ahead, tracking the Eslo Derby. Okay, that is not an edit. But then we get this kind of oddball jump. I'll turn the sound off just in case that music is a problem. Uh, that might have been it. So we had that weird little bit of garbled something or other at the end there. At least a cooking segment from something. So that might be the end of the road for this tape. It is indeed fast forwarding. So if the counter starts up again, we know we got something there. But I'm going to say that is all she wrote for tape number two. So I'm going to let this ride out in the VCR. We'll uh, start going through our three truly mystery tapes. And uh, we'll start with lucky number 13. Why not? Okay, I just grabbed tape number three. This one already has the record tab taken out. The first two did not. Let's see what we get here. Lucky tape number 13. Liposuction Geraldo. on your face to get rid of wrinkles. Peeling your old skin off and your wrinkles along with it. An acupuncture facelift. 
a magic anti-wrinkle wand, new creams, new injections, and an update on that latest of all miracle drugs, Retin-A. We have seven of the latest ways to get rid of your wrinkles. New hope for old skin is our focus today on Geraldo. All the quality of better resale value. And we got ads. Uh, unfortunately, I, I kind of wish this was uh, Geraldo going through Al Capone's vault, even though that's been uh, saved several times over, and I think it's on YouTube like three times over. But uh, yeah, judging from the look of things, that last tape was 87. I'm going to guess this is about the same. Classico da Bruzzi. And because in it... Checking back in briefly here. Uh, there was a thing for the 1988 Jefferson Award, so I'm going to guess this recording would be from 88. And uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and call this tape a keeper, just for the, the goofiness of uh, the Geraldo show. Uh, yeah, I'd imagine I could probably get away with posting this. I've seen episodes of uh, a lot of this old stuff on YouTube here. But, uh, yeah, so far so good. EP mode, so we got a potential six hours here if it stays that way. Geraldo was one hour. I know that much. And here we are at the end of the episode of Geraldo. We'll see if it keeps rolling. Nope! Cut to uh, the CBS station in Rochester. Uh, okay, ads for Kate and Allie and Designing Women. Am I going to be watching those shows? Next week. See you then. Oh, that looks familiar. Deep in the far reaches of outer space. This could be interesting. Once existed a civilization. And there are a few people who think that he might have landed here. Superman's 50th anniversary. Sponsored by... NyQuil. The nighttime sniffing, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head, fever so you can rest medicine. You can't make this up. Hallucinatory NyQuil sponsoring the Superman 50th anniversary. Um, what if this guy really came from out of... Out of Willie Nelson, Texas style, Saturday at 9. Okay, I'm uh, going to chime back in. This is uh, not only on YouTube already... But it is uh, on uh, one of the special edition DVDs of uh, Superman 2. So, uh, yeah, I, I might not transfer this one unless there's some really weird local ads. But otherwise, you know, this is a big network airing. The ads, for the most part, are going to be the same. You're only going to get a precious few local ads uh, kind of towards the end of the broadcast. So, uh, a cool find, something I didn't know existed, but uh, yeah, not necessarily a keeper in the greater scheme of things if it's already circulating. And uh, I can't find an exact date, but one source does say February 29th, 1988, so on a leap day. Okay, that brings us to the end of that one. We'll see if it keeps rolling. Or if we get whatever happens learn next. More about Superman and other superheroes. The Library of Congress suggests these books: The Comic Book Heroes by Will Jacobs and Gerard Jones, Superman Serial to Serial by Gary Dickers, America's Favor. David Burns is at a home in Spencerport tonight. And we got a chop there, but we are in some sort of local news here. Power's life right now is deciding just which birthday this is. Boy, it's not Through the years, more mothers of our lives. Oh, we got one whole segment there, and we chopped to something else. Okay. We'll see what we get next. I'm TV 13, meteorologist Bill Peterson. It will be cold tonight. Temperatures are dropping well into the teens. We'll warm things up into the 20s on Tuesday. A little light snow in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon. On Saturday, Ray Groff decided to change the oil in his new car. Well, I kind of would have liked to have had the Carol Burnett rerun. I haven't uh, seen what, that configuration of Carol Burnett and Friends in uh, quite a long time. But, uh, okay, so uh, local TV was rerunning that stuff at one point. So what is on next? Uh, the Geraldo stuff alone is making this tape a keeper. Okay, is that Nancy Reagan? 
Okay, what do we got here? A salute to Virginia Johnson, part of the Volunteer Connection. Are you enormous rel relieved to be getting out of here? This is a terrible fishbowl <laughs> to be in, isn't it? Hard to raise a controversy there. It is indeed Nancy Reagan, and this is at the uh, end of the Reagan administration. So that would put this at late 88, early 89. That she spoke. And of course, Ted Koppel. Can't forget him. Free America. And she had some tough things to say. There are things that I Carl admit. Campbell may take the stand in the A Hall Campbell. Interesting place for an edit. And more Sally Jesse. Oh dear. Terrific kick out of my own family, and I just love. Um, the whole family atmosphere, the warmth, and being with relatives. That's right, even being with my own relatives. Not that they're all great, but I think that once this show is over today, we may all come away with a different sense of what family and unity are about. A considerably less interesting episode of Sally Jesse. Uh, this is about uh, siblings separated at birth or separated young. But I'm looking for the copyright date here. 1988. So assuming this was recorded after the Nancy Reagan thing, that would I presumably put this in late 88. I did not see any Christmassy or holiday ads. So this may even be more like uh, October of 88. Wearing gowns of their own choosing. Well, uh, that cut out not too long after the show ended, so we don't get to see what came on next. I noticed Alan Thicke in the foreground. All right, uh, let me chime back in just briefly here. This is the Miss USA specifically pageant, 1988. According to the internet, that is Tuesday, March 1st, 1988. And this is joined in progress. So I'm going to guess this is a uh, older recording that got partially recorded over. And uh, I have noticed like part of a commercial but I think there was some chopping going on with this one I'm just kind of scanning through it at the moment here but uh, yeah I'm gonna guess unless this just had really long segments uh, that we had a commercial chopper okay we'll get to the end of this and we'll see what happens it's probably just gonna cut off This is CBS. Next from Houston Tower, are we going to get a new jail? Steve Scully. Are we getting any local news? Uh, sort of. Relatively private life. Now, for the first time on Rochester Television, John Washburn is going public. We asked him why. Make solutions that are thing. All right, we got another episode of Donahue here, and that was the tail end of the midday local news that we'd seen with, uh, I think, a mistaken uh, cut in. But uh, yeah, this seems to be from the day after the Miss USA pageant. So assuming I'm right, which I might not be, Wednesday, March 2nd, 1988. And uh, this particular episode of Donahue is about a mistress that uh, John F. Kennedy had. Uh, it's nowhere near as interesting as you'd think. Actually, uh, listening to this woman talk, she just sounds uh, uh, really easy. Let's put it that way. Why go to the laundromat when you can have your very own washer and dryer from Rainbow? The money you spend at the laundromat is gone forever. For about the same cost, you can rent to own your very own washer and dryer. Yeah, I don't appreciate you coming forward. And I was trying to think of, what the hell were you doing seeing a married man? What about the ramifications of us as a country? I mean, did Service that ever enter your provided mind? provided and promotional and me, fees paid so by the you following. Can you deal with this when it comes to thinking of new ways to crash test cars, no one goes farther than Volvo. Volvo, a car you can believe in. Yeah, 10 or 11, we had, um, we had the BMW, <laughs> but obviously it had nothing to do with the match. I know there's a lot of you out there that are hurting and feel like you're sinking to the very bottom of life. Well, you don't have to sink. Praise God. I've got a lifeline for you called the Believer's Voice of Victory Broadcast. I'm Kenneth Copeland, and I want you to... And he wants you to send him money, probably. Uh, given this was uh, 1988, this would have been kind of at the height of all the TV preacher scandals, wouldn't it? Wouldn't have been. On WOKR. Memorial, the Gorilla brings three classes of the most powerful... And there was an ad, and uh, hey, Los Lobos. 
Carmen was rehearsing the orchestra this morning. Well, this is frustrating. We've been through, I think, four recordings in 20 minutes worth of footage. It's just a, a fragmented mess. We've had a few minutes of the Grammys uh, from 1988, uh, a few minutes of Nightline. Now we've jumped to this other, uh, well, I guess this is still part of a local news thing. But uh, yeah, I think we're getting to that magic point in the tape where we're really just kind of uh, peeling back the layers, metaphorically speaking. Flowers March Easy Living Furniture and Carpet Sale. Flowers, Monroe Avenue. From WOKR Rochester, this is News Center 13 at noon. With As Cheryl Gandy reports, the local churches hope to pick up where Graham left off. Okay, well, we got kind of a messy ending. We had uh, a complete local new news going on. Then we have just the best picture award for the 1988 Academy Awards. And now we've jerked back to this uh, little bit of local news and in EP mode. So presumably just a few minutes, I'm going to guess that hope really that there are no further recordings. I've got uh, way too many notes written on just this one. Yeah. All right. I'm going to call that tape done. All right. I'm going to finish my notes here and we will pop in tape number four, which is just labeled number 23. We'll see what happens. All right, tape number four, and I'm dropping my remote. This is the one that I had to reattach the leader to both ends. So this, uh, hopefully. Be late for the unknown soldier. Okay, I'm sure you wouldn't well, mind. Something. Well, believe it or not, this is kind of an obscurity to have two copies of, but this is the uh, TV movie version of Roman Holiday, made in 1987. I already got this on a beta tape, and I actually just cataloged it not too terribly long ago. Uh, this is joined in progress. If memory serves, it was complete on the other tape. But uh, yeah, it's a network airing, so it's going to be mostly the same ads. And uh, why would they remake Roman Holiday? There was really no reason for this. But uh, anyway, I will give my due diligence here. I'll just kind of scan through this. We are in EP mode, so I could be looking again at a very uh, long uh, scan through the tape. Hopefully this one isn't quite as uh, choppy as that last one. Mother's old flame. No one loved her the way he did. St. Elsewhere. Oh, there's a cut. Now, stay tuned for an NBC, NBC special. Presentation. They're uh, canceling St. Elsewhere for this. For the next hour, our subject oh, is sex. Some of the content may not be suitable for some viewers. Parental discretion is advised. Diarrhea specialist. We are. All right, I'm going to check back in briefly here and I'll scan through this. Uh, this is called Scared Sexless, and it's really uh, more of an AIDS scare sort of thing. And this would have been kind of as it was really coming into view in 1987 or so. And indeed, uh, according to a quick Google search, this aired Wednesday, December 30th, 1987. So we just missed Christmas. Uh, not going to see any uh, Christmas ad goofiness goodness in here, unfortunately. But, um, of course, it's a big network thing. So, once again, I'm not really seeing much in the way of local ads. And it's uh, this was kind of the point where TV was getting uh, a bit homogenized. And you can really kind of see it starting around this time. So, uh, I, funnily enough, I mentioned I'd already had a copy of that TV movie version of Roman Holiday. This got plugged at one point during a, a Roman Holiday. So, uh, yeah, I guess two people were on the same wavelength back in late 1987. So I'm going to just scan through this here. But uh, it, it's nice to have ads from this time, but I'm going to call this one a relative loser. Good evening, everyone. Don Alhart has the night off. I'm Gary Nuremberg. A Fairport plant. All right, and we've rolled into the local news here. For 90 minutes this afternoon, after a major propane leak at the plant. Uh, display on top of the space frame in Manhattan Square, so we think that's uh, equally as exciting. We're trying to keep things fresh and wanted to try some new ideas this year. Okay, well, here's one to sit on for the holidays. Uh, local news. 
New Year's Eve, 1987, December 31st, 1987, talking about uh, changing up the New Year's festivities by having it at a skating rink uh, instead of a, whatever the normal tradition was, uh, maybe still is in Rochester. I've never been to Rochester. I, I don't know how things go down there. But uh, yeah, this might be something to hang on to for that time of year. If you're just coming down here to skate, remember skating is free. After eight o'clock, you just have to pay to rent those skates. About half an hour before 1988. 000... Okay, so we've, uh, we are at New Year's Eve and I thought maybe we had the late news, but I guess it was more uh, the six o'clock news, if this footage is anything to go by. But uh, nonetheless, I think we got a winner for New Year's. Jennings. Sitting in tonight, Chief Correspondent Richard Threlkel. Up and get set for the bowl games with Sledgehammer. You're supposed to hurt the one you love. Oh, the voice of the late, great Ernie Anderson there. Jane Fonda, Robert Redford, the electric horseman following Sledgehammer. Tonight. So they're not even trying to run anything new. New Year's Eve celebrations new at the time. and why officials were forced to evacuate a section of Fairport today. All the news tonight at 11. Announcing the Holman Holiday Happening. We come back here right after 12 o'clock. Our remote crews station. And we've jumped right ahead to just about midnight at ABC. So I suppose it would have been uh, Dick Clark's uh, rocking New Year's Eve. And there's some of New York's finest. I'm going to hold off on letting you see the ball drop. That sounded dirty. A powerful drama from the woman who lived it. Well, if nothing else, we're going in order here. We uh, had a bit of Johnny Carson's New Year's 1987 going into 88 show, just a precious few minutes of it. And now we are doing the Angelian story TV movie, which uh, apparently aired Monday, January 4th, 1988. So we're just kind of rolling right along here. And we are four hours into this EP mode tape. So I'm going to guess that this is going to be it. Maybe there's uh, some little fragments of things at the end. But uh, yeah, I, I had no idea this was a thing. Okay, well, we got about another potential 25 minutes here, and I admittedly have rewound a bit, but uh, we got some stand-up from one of my absolute favorite stand-up comedians, and uh, that would be the great Stephen Wright. But uh, we do have, like, part of a commercial here before it kicks into that, so it seems to be Stephen Wright appearing on, uh, like, The Tonight Show or Letterman or something like that. There he is. Going that far. <laughs> Hermits have no peer pressure. And that's all she wrote for that tape. I mean, just in the name of due diligence, we'll make sure that there's nothing floating around at the end of the tape. And it's getting late here. Look at that time. That is accurate. And we still got one more to go. But uh, yeah, we had about eight minutes or so of David Letterman ads cut out. But, uh, and I'm sure it's already on YouTube. I, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen the Stephen Wright stuff on YouTube already. Yep, that's it for that one. So let's get our final tape of this uh, night going into morning, as it turns out. And this one is not marked at all. There's not so much as a number on this one. Okay, I had a problem with the recording getting started, but we are now on the final tape, and we have the 1995 Grammy Awards aired on CBS, and we're still in Rochester. I'm, I think it's safe to say everything from this lot is from in or near Rochester. And uh, nothing too exciting. This was the year that uh, Annie Lennox showed up as Minnie Mouse, and that was uh, about the extent of it. But uh, yeah, I've just been kind of scanning through it, and you can tell this one is in LP mode because my VCR is uh, really screwing with the colors and just smearing all over. But uh, thus far, pretty uneventful. Well, I'm going to call our last tape rather uneventful. It was the effectively entire Grammys joined uh, maybe a minute or two late. 
um, all three hours. I had a little hiccup with the, the tape. I had to pull it back out and back in. That's why the counter is reading 57 minutes and 50 seconds. But it was indeed a three-hour-ish recording. And I'm just running fast forward to the end, but I think that's it. And like I said, uh, even though that one, it had its ads and everything, but uh, by 95, to me, it's not all that interesting and very, very little local stuff in there. So, I, uh, yeah, I think I did quite well for the night. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this tape out. I'll turn my lights back on, turn my camera on uh, just briefly. And we'll wrap things up for the night. Uh, truly night. Actually, we're crossing into morning now. All right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll attach my notes to that later. But uh, we got tapes. We got uh, as decent a notes as I can get without really, truly going through these things right now. Of course, my camera's horribly askew and I have pulled the record tabs if they weren't out already on every last one of these things and of course they don't want to stand up too good but uh, yeah I'm gonna say we had some winners there uh, certainly three out of five uh, we'll call it the Sally Jesse Raphael tape we'll call it the Geraldo tape and then the New Year's Eve tape those were all keepers, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the only one I can say definitively that you'll see on Archive Annex in the future would be the New Year's Eve one. I'll try and get that transferred sometime over the summer and just hang on to it until the appropriate date. But uh, yeah, and I'll just throw in the, the ALF tape I was using for an example. There we go. That's a night's work. Eh. Seems like an appropriate ending. All right, I'll talk to you again soon. Parental discretion is advised. Specialist.